The purpose of this video is to use coupling constant tables, such as the one shown here on the screen, to evaluate the splitting patterns of organic molecules. This is continuing to look at the concept of multiplicity, one of the very valuable pieces of information that we can glean from a proton NMR spectrum as we assemble the puzzle and the pieces of the puzzle for the structure of a molecule. So on this chart, what we are looking at is typical values that have been empirically determined for proton coupling constants in a few different situations. So what we're showing here is that typically in the upper left-hand corner, if we have these two protons that are coupled to one another, as they would be expected to be since they're vicinal to one another, that the so-called coupling constant, this J value as it's abbreviated as, would be about seven hertz. Meaning that if we were looking at a doublet signal that we were say evaluating the chemical shift of this hydrogen shown in red, we observed it was a doublet because the signal was being split by this one vicinal hydrogen, N plus one equals two, we would expect that doublet to have a J value of seven hertz, meaning that if we were looking at the doublet that we would expect there, that seven hertz would be the distance between the apex of those two signals, the, the split signal that we are looking at there. So we can use these J values as ways of assessing what the structure is of a molecule. For example, if we were looking at two hypotheses, we had a hypothesis that we had this type of structure where two protons were trans to one another relative to the alkene, and the other hypothesis was that the two bonds were cis, then we could look at the coupling constants as one way to determine whether the configuration was trans or whether it was cis, because if we measured the coupling constant, that is the distance between the peaks within that splitting pattern, we would expect one to show 10 hertz versus the other would be measured at more like 15 hertz. So this is a way that we can go about predicting the structures of organic molecules. Another thing that we should also be able to do is take a structure and use this information to make a reasonable splitting pattern tree for that particular structure. We went over a discussion a couple of videos ago about general aspects of creating a splitting pattern tree. And in those examples, you were given specific J values, that is specific Hertz values to represent how widely the sub peaks were spread. So let's take a look at an example problem here. To apply this table, which will be available to you on quizzes and things like that, you are definitely not expected to memorize this. So in this, what we're gonna do is draw the expected NMR splitting pattern tree for all of the vanillic hydrogens, including listing the predicted J values. So in this, remember that the vinyl protons are the ones directly bonded to the alkene. So we'd have the blue vinyl proton here, the red one here, and the green one over here. We would expect these three protons to show up as three separate signals in the NMR spectrum. In other words, they're going to show up at three separate places along the x-axis because they are in three separate chemical environments. Even though these two, the red and the blue proton, are attached to the same carbon, they are in a very different chemical environment because the double bond locks those atoms into place. They can't freely rotate around. So these two, the red and the blue, are non-equivalent to one another. They would have their own individual proton chemical shifts. And so we need to draw the expected NMR splitting pattern tree for all of these vinyl hydrogens in blue, red, and green, including the predicted J values, using the table up here as our key reference point, particularly the three entries over here are going to be very, very useful in evaluating this. So let's take as our first example structure, or example proton rather, the one in blue here in the upper left-hand corner. So we would expect that to couple with the red proton that it is geminal to, the one right here, because those two are non-equivalent. And we would also expect it to couple with 
the proton signal in green over here that it is vicinal to. And the coupling constants that we would expect there, just sketching out in blue here, we would expect that these two signals that I've drawn the arrows to would show a coupling constant, since they are geminal, of approximately two hertz. So a very small, very narrow splitting going there. We used this two hertz entry as the approximate J value, that is our coupling value in hertz, from the two geminal protons. The proton in blue, we would also expect to be coupled to the one in green there and showing the two arrows there. The two groups are trans to one another here and here. And we would predict that their J coupling constant value would be about 15 Hertz. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in 15 Hertz here. Those are the two protons that the one in blue would be coupled to. It's coupled to the one in red with a coupling constant of two hertz, coupled to the one in green with a coupling constant of 15 hertz. So what we would do to make this splitting pattern tree for the proton that is in blue is we start the tree up here at the top, and this would be just representing the delta value that is the parts per million, the location on the x-axis where the signal would appear for this particular proton. If you look at your NMR chart of expected chemical shift values, uh, vinylic hydrogen typically shows up between about five and six ppms. So this value would be somewhere between five and six ppms. That is not really what the question is asking for here. It's asking us to draw the full tree. So what's going to happen here is that that signal for the proton in blue is going to be split with a frequency of 15 Hertz via the, the vicinal hydrogen in green and two Hertz by the one in red. So splitting with the proton that is green is going to split the signal into a doublet that is spaced out by 15 Hertz. We start with the larger frequency here. So that 15 Hertz coupling would result in this being a gap between the two of here of 15 hertz. So we've got a 15 hertz gap between those two signals. And then what's going to happen is that takes care of one of the splittings. It would split into a doublet because this has one equivalent vicinal hydrogen there. And then we also have one other hydrogen that we're coupling to, this one in red, and the coupling constant there is two hertz. And so that two hertz splitting is going to take the initial doublet and it's going to split it again into another doublet with a much narrower spacing between these two signals of just two hertz going on there. Same thing over here. Split that signal at two hertz. So as a result of this, the final signal that we would see is a doublet of doublets, which I'm going to abbreviate as a DD here, but asking for the splitting pattern tree and predicting the J values of that, what you would need to do is show what I have indicated in the tree here that we start off as a single branch coming out the tree representing the PPMs that that signal would be expected to be found at, and then splitting it up from the highest frequency, the widest splitting pattern here, which was 15 hertz, splits into a doublet. And then from there, we had another splitting, which was a smaller splitting into two hertz. So that takes each of those two signals, the two sub peaks here, and splits it again on both sides to give us the doublet of doublets that we would observe for this. So that took care of our splitting pattern tree for the proton in blue. Let's now do the proton in red. So for the proton in red, we already have some of the critical coupling constants sketched in here. We have the coupling constant of two Hertz going to the blue proton. So, and we can see that's correct because if we come up here, if the two protons are geminal with one another, the coupling constant is about two Hertz. And then the other one that we need to sketch in here is these two protons are vicinal to one another and cis. And when we look at our chart, the best match here we have is these two groups are cis. 
and we expect that the coupling constant there is about 10 hertz. So now we look at relative to that red proton that we sketched out in the lower left hand corner. We start our tree at the top with its delta value. Again, it's a vinyl proton, so it's going to be around somewhere between 5 and 6 ppm approximately. And then thinking about the splitting of that, our higher frequency splitting is the splitting that is going over to this proton that's visceral in green, that's 10 hertz, versus the blue splitting is 2 hertz. And so we're going to do the splitting that runs over to this higher frequency first. That's our 10 hertz splitting. And I'm going to show that in green representing that is what's going over to the proton that is vicinal. And so we draw this part of the tree out and I'm going to plug in the 10 hertz there. That's our broader one. And then we come on down and we have a 2 hertz coupling constant here between the red proton and the one in blue. And so therefore in blue what I'm going to do is take that 10 hertz signal and split it on both of the branches and the gap between each of these would be just 2 hertz. That's a much smaller, smaller gap indicating that smaller coupling constant. So we would have here again a doublet of doublets and we could trace it out like I've drawn in the tree here illustrating the um, splitting pattern and trying to represent that schematically based on the number of hertz so that in the actual NMR spectrum one thing that you could do is you could look at the peaks here representing this doublet of doublets and you could measure the coupling constants by measuring the distance between here and here or here and here equivalently to get that 2 hertz value. To get the 10 hertz value you'd be going halfway between these two peaks and measuring over to halfway between the other two peaks to get that bigger coupling constant, the coupling constant that ran between the two green lines here. So it run down to here and down to here, measuring the distance between these two and converting that into hertz would give you the J value experimentally. And that is useful because when we look at these values and we see that two protons are coupled to one another, if the blue one is coupled to the red one, they are showing the same coupling constant to one another. If the blue one sees a coupling constant of 2 hertz with the red proton, the red one must see a coupling constant of 2 hertz with the blue one, is what we've been seeing throughout making these trees. So that can help tell you which protons are geminal or vicinal to other protons in the molecule because they will have the same coupling constant. Because if Hydrogen A is coupled to hydrogen B. Hydrogen B must be equally coupled to hydrogen A. The relationship is reciprocal, in other words. So let's go ahead then and do our third and final proton in the set here. That is the proton that we see in green. So I'm going to erase my splitting pattern tree here to give us some space to work. So in this problem, we start with the Proton that's green, that's going to be the top of our tree here. Our delta value in ppms is what we're beginning with. And again, like with the others, that'd be between 5 and 6 ppms on the x-axis because it is a vinylic proton. And then from there, we ask who this green proton is coupled to. So it's coupled to the vicinal hydrogen over here. It is also coupled to the vicinal hydrogen up here. So it's coupled to the vicinal hydrogen that it is cis to and to the vicinal hydrogen that it is trans to, in other words. And we have two separate coupling constants for those two separate non-equivalent vicinal hydrogens that we are coupled to. We have a 15 hertz coupling constant of the one in blue, 10 hertz approximately to the one in red, and so we need to draw that out. We start with the larger one, 15 hertz is larger than 10. So I'm going to start by drawing the spacing of this as labeled 15 hertz. And it's labeled as 15 hertz in a doublet because there's one vicinal hydrogen there that's enabling that 15 hertz split of the signal. So we'd have our two lines here. And I'm just kind of arbitrarily labeling this as 15 hertz. This is what I've established in my drawing as 15 hertz, and I'm going to try to draw everything else to scale relative to that. 
then the other hydrogen that we are coupled to is the green hydrogen in addition to being coupled to the blue one that we showed is that 15 hertz splitting in the tree. It's also coupled 10 hertz to the one in red. And so I'm going to draw in red my splitting here. And I'm going to try to show that as being about two thirds as large as the above splitting because the above splitting was 15 hertz. This one is 10 hertz. So this gap here between the two signals, the two sub peaks is 10 hertz in both cases. And so in this doublet of doublets, which I'll label as DD, we would expect that when we drew this out, it's going to be pretty widely spaced because 10 and 15 hertz are the largest coupling constants on this sheet. So we're gonna have a signal here, signal here, signal here, signal here, all along your x-axis and centered somewhere around five to six ppms. So the center of that is the exact chemical shift of that particular proton. And then the signals are symmetrically split on both sides of that in this case. And we can measure the spacing of those to come up with our coupling constants going from here to here or here to here to give the 10 hertz. And then the 15 hertz, the broader splitting, goes from the middle of that left-hand doublet to the middle of the doublet on the right, giving us our overall doublet of doublets shape. So this is information that you should be familiar with and have in your toolkit of materials that you can use to help you in solving the structures of organic molecules, because these are the typical coupling constants that we will see, and we will have problems where we label um, the coupling constants are given the coupling constants to help you in determining exactly which hydrogen is which within an organic molecule as you work through its structure.